We begin tonight with the falling temperatures. A lot of Coloradans woke up to snow outside and it could be days before temperatures are above freezing. This afternoon we've watched cities and hospital systems react to this. UC Health is moving Sunday's mass vaccination clinic from Coors Field to a conference center at the UC Health campus. This is going to impact about a thousand people. And Denver Mayor Michael Hancock announced the city will expand its overflow emergency shelter for people experiencing homelessness. Now over the next few minutes we'll be talking about the impact of cold weather on vaccine sites and the rising avalanche danger in our mountains. We're going to begin though with our chief meteorologist Mike Nelson with a look at these conditions. Mike. <laughs> the temperatures are amazing in their range. Look at the temperature in Golden right now. It's one and just up the road and a little bit higher 33 at Blackhawk. So it's elevation, but this shallow layer of cold air is going to gradually surge toward the west and the south over the next couple of days and bring in much colder conditions as we head toward this upcoming weekend, especially at nighttime with sub-zero lows expected. Right now across the state, it's in the 40s out west, but below zero up in Sterling, there's the front moving back toward the southwest. Look at how colorful the map is right now. Let me break this down a little bit for you. In the mountains, avalanche watch, winter storm warnings, winter storm watch, southern Colorado, wind chill advisories out across the northeast plains. We have some snow developing, and that will increase tomorrow into Sunday with about four inches likely in the Denver area. Extremely cold air. We'll see the snow in the metro and the heavier snows for the mountains with the avalanche conditions getting worse over the course of the weekend. Thank you, Mike. Denver and most other Front Range communities have closed COVID testing centers this weekend or moved some of their efforts indoors, but the cold will not slow the pace of vaccinations. Governor Pohl has made that clear today. We are having cold conditions, but most of the larger clinics, you remain in your vehicle, you simply roll down the window, you get the vaccine, uh, you wait 15 minutes and you go. Uh, I would be more concerned if there were blizzard-like conditions. That's not what we're facing this weekend. There might be some precip 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 light precipitation, but by and large, it's cold conditions. So everything continues as normal. Uh, please show up. Now, the governor said Colorado will not let Mother Nature slow down the vaccine effort. A mother, uh, mother Nature won't stop Coloradans from traveling to the mountains either. <laughs> no, Denver 7 Sloan Dickey is live at Loveland Pass tonight, and there are high expectations up there, Sloan. There certainly are high expectations. It's going to be a great weekend up in the mountains if you're looking to go skiing. But there are some concerns with all this traffic and all that snow, and experts say that if you're going to be ambitious in the mountains this weekend, you need to be prepared. Way stoked. Regulars at Berthoud Pass have a unique ski routine. We're going to go down the mountain. They get down the mountain the same way, or at least try to. Looks like it's uh, pretty powdery on top. But they still need a ride back up. We just come down here, and then we cross the road, wave at people, maybe stick our thumb out, and usually a truck or something will come pick us up. It's all in the backcountry, which this year presents a new set of challenges. I see avalanche activity all the time on several of the runs on the other side of the pass here. Avalanche Avalanches. And uh, with the new snow, the avalanche danger is going to be rising this weekend. It's the worst avalanche season in a decade. Eight people have died in Colorado this year. We have uh, really weak snow uh, at the bottom of the snowpack. It's incredibly fragile. We've been seeing avalanches triggered uh, from a distance and from low angle slopes. Another problem is the sheer number of people trying to get into the mountains this year, pushing unprepared skiers into the wilderness. If you're going to places where avalanches can release, even small slopes, you really need to take that seriously this year. The Colorado Avalanche Information Center released this map showing considerable avalanche danger along major portions of the Front Range through Monday. Make sure that you check the avalanche forecast, uh, get a little bit of education, carry proper equipment. Everyone has their ski routines. It's a great uh, weekend up here in the mountains. Gonna have fresh snow. But no matter the routine, Lots of powder, fresh powder. It's nice to ride. Be prepared. Now those conditions change really quickly, and when experts mention that fragile snowpack, they mean all this light snow that's settling in. It doesn't necessarily have a place to settle, so when it's on the slopes like you see behind me, it really easily slides. So it's going to be a great weekend. Don't be afraid of that, but if you are going to be more ambitious, experts say you really don't want to show up unprepared. Reporting at Loveland Pass, Sloan Dickey, Denver 7. All right, thank you, Sloan.
Well, today the governor called the pandemic a unique opportunity to make a positive impact on the future of Colorado. The state legislature begins its session next week. The governor is pushing a billion dollar stimulus package. 220 million goes to roads and infrastructure. 120 million will be used to expand broadband access and more than 100 million would go toward business grants and job training. All of these proposals have a high economic multiplier. That means that they will create jobs and contribute to the economy for every dollar invested. We will uh, benefit from much more than a dollar over time. Now, there are critics in the legislature who worry about the size of this. The plan relies on Colorado's reserve fund and banks on a strong economic recovery. Economists are split on whether the governor's projections are too aggressive. Former President Trump's second impeachment trial could wrap up sooner than expected. We continue to provide you with a 360 look at the proceedings. On Capitol Hill, Donald Trump's legal team only needed three hours to lay out their defense. They called the whole process unconstitutional. They also worked to separate former President Trump's words from the actions of the mob on January 6th. And tonight we'll show you the defense. The Democrats' response during Q&A and why this trial could have a lasting impact, even if the outcome seems certain. We begin with Faith Abube in Washington. Donald Trump's legal team opening with an aggressive defense of the former president, turning the spotlight directly on the Democrats. It's a deliberate attempt by the Democrat Party to smear, censor, and cancel. The defense accusing House impeachment managers of manufacturing evidence against Trump to boost their case that the twice impeached former president is singularly responsible for the deadly January 6th insurrection. They cut off the video before they showed you the president's optimistic, patriotic words that followed immediately after. Trump's attorneys using their own selectively edited video montage, taking both the former president and Democrats out of context. Ready to throw a punch. Well, you have to be ready to throw a punch. Donald Trump, I think you need to go back and, and punch him in the face. The defense lawyer's case hinging on three main arguments, that the trial lacks due process, it's unconstitutional, and that Trump's words before the deadly insurrection amount to everyday political rhetoric using a more than nine minute sequence of Democrats using the word fight to try to make their point. We're going to fight and we're going to continue to fight. I am going to be fighting. It's a word people use, but please stop the hypocrisy. The defense team urging senators to vote to acquit Trump, branding the impeachment trial nothing more than political theater. It is constitutional cancel culture. And late Friday afternoon, the trial moving into a question and answer session. Isn't it the case that the violent attack and siege on the Capitol on January 6 would not have happened if not for the conduct of President Trump? To answer your question very directly, Donald Trump summoned the mob. He assembled the mob and he lit the flame. And after the Q&A session, both sides will make their closing arguments before senators cast their decisive vote on whether Trump is innocent or guilty of inciting an insurrection. The trial is expected to resume tomorrow. Faith Abube, ABC News, Capitol Hill. Thank you, Faith. Now, this number has not changed all week. 37 senators indicate they will acquit former President Trump. If anything, the trial has hardened those senators' views. Joni Ernst of Iowa said yesterday it's it's been horrible that people relive that experience. I see that we should be working on COVID. There are so many other things that we should be doing right now. Even if he's acquitted, the past month has changed the Republican Party and the former president's place in it. For one, of course, we hear less from him since his Twitter ban, but some prominent Republicans seem to be breaking with their former boss, Nikki Haley, for one. The one time UN ambassador told Politico today, this is a quote, we shouldn't have followed him and we shouldn't have listened to him and we can't let that ever happen again. We've heard from so many of you throughout this process and thank you for one and please keep these uh, thoughts coming. Share your perspectives 360 at the Denver Channel .com. The bitter cold is taking hold and the snow is not far away. Years after a massive fire, Colorado families explain their struggle to get back to normal. We're still struggling trying to get things around here back to normal. As a judge considers what to do with the accused fire starter. And how an ad for an e-cigarette may have ended up in a Jeffco student's remote lesson 